This is my latest uh, video in the series about how to program adventure games. Here I'm going to explain how I got started with a simple adventure game written in Java. So here you can see the game running. If I click N for North, it says there's no exit. I click S for South. I move into room 2, which is called the Gold Room. South again, Dark Cave. North, I'm back to the Gold Room. And so on. I can just move around the map and it tells me where I am. So this is the very basic outline of an adventure game. It's very simple. It doesn't do anything at the moment apart from set up the map and let the player move around. In this video, I'm going to show you how I went about creating that. If you want to do all, if you want to reproduce the code, I'll show you the code and you can stop the video, you can pause the video and copy my code. But that's not really the idea of this. The idea of this is just to show you how I went about creating this. It's not even the best or ultimate structure. The code can be improved in many respects. And in the course of this series, I'll show you how I refine this game to make it better. But in this one, I'm just going to show you the rough outline of the game so that you can see how I structured the code. First of all, I've got these packages over here. The uh, design is just put in the default package, and that's just my form design with the buttons. When I click one of these buttons, it calls one of these methods, the action uh, performed event handler, and that calls game, which is an object, uh, move player to method, and it passes a direction. Again, I'll explain how that, this actually works in another video, but I just want to show you the structure of my code for now. So here's my form uh, code. It just creates a game object. You can see up here I've declared game to be of type uh, of the class game and it creates this new game object. Then I have a text box. That's a uh, this box here which is a text area box and that displays any output from the game as, as I move around it shows me which room I'm in and this method here takes control of that so it examines the room number and either displays no exit if there's no exit in that direction or else it displays the name and the description of the room and down here as we've already seen are the event handlers which were set up when I just double click the buttons after putting them on the form and I put in this code here to call update output to display the output and then passing it to uh, passing to it this uh, this data here from game dot move player to direction dot north. Now let's look in the game class, which is in the game package. This is where the game starts. It just creates an array list uh, to hold them up. This is not really the best solution. I'll look at other alternatives to doing this later on, but it's simple. It's simple to get started. It's a simple array list of uh, rooms, room objects. And it's got a player that represents the person playing the game, and that's of the actor class. The game itself creates a map as a new array list, and it adds this series of new rooms uh, to, the, to the map. So you can see that there's the room name, the room description, and then north, south, west, and east. Either it has direction dot no exit, which actually is just minus one, in fact, the value, or else it has a numerical uh, piece of data which indicates the room at that direction. The room is just an index into the map. I've explained wh various ways of, of creating maps in another video, so if you haven't watched that and this is your first attempt at writing an adventure game, uh, be sure to watch my other videos which explain the, the, the theory, if you like, of, of creating adventure games and, and creating maps. So then here's my array list, uh, get map and set map. These are just accessor methods. And the player, get player, set player, and move actor to. Now actor could be any sort of interactive character. It could be some character in the game. In fact, in this very simple version, the only actor I have is the actual player of the game. And an actor just has a room, it just has a location, so that I can move the actor around from place to place. And that's the method here, move to, that actually does the moving. It takes an actor uh, object as an argument and a direction, and it examines in this switch the direction, whether it's north, south, east, or west, and it looks for an exit 
from the room in that direction. And if it can move, then it does the moving here by calling move actor 2. And that's uh, up here. It just sets the room. It just changes the room to whichever room is in that direction. And move player 2 is the uh, function that's called when the button is clicked. And all that does is it calls move 2 at the moment. So I'm, I'm putting it in this way because I intend to change and elaborate upon the game later on. But this is the very simple version of how I move the actor object or the player around the map. Now here are my game objects. This is a little hierarchy of classes. The At the base of the class hierarchy is a thing. This is a, the most generic sort of game playing object. And all the thing has is a string name and a string description. It has this constructor, so I can pass to it a name and a description where I create a thing object. And it has these uh, get and set accessors to set a new name or return the current name. From the thing object descends the room object. You can see class room extends thing. So a room automatically inherits a name and a description. And it adds on four int variables, nswe, to represent rooms in those directions at the north, south, west, and east exits of a room object. And again, it has these accessors to get and set them. Actor, as I say, currently actor, the only actor in this game is the player, but it could be some sort of other interactive character. Actor again extends thing. Actor also adds on a room because each actor has to have a location. So the player, for example, has to have a room that the player is currently in. So, and I, I've just called get and set room there. And finally, I've created this globals package, and that just contains an enum, and that has north, south, east, and west, which is convenient for analyzing the um, uh, direction. If, if you see again, if I show you back uh, in the adventure form, when a button is clicked, each button, north, south, east, or west, has a direction dot north, dot south, dot west, or dot east. And when it calls move player two, uh, that direction is analyzed here in the switch statement. So direction is just a convenient way of representing those directions. Uh, and I also have a constant down here, declared public stati static final to represent no exit, which happens to be minus one. So this is a very, very simple uh, first attempt at a Java adventure game. I'll explain some of the detail in a, in a bit more detail in a subsequent video. And later on, I'll develop this and make it a bit more intelligent, add on uh, extra features so it becomes a real playable game. And I'll also change some of the things in here, which I'll explain why later on to make it a more robust and a more elegant design of game. But this is good enough to get started if you want to have a go at writing your own adventure game in Java.